Hello, my colleagues, friends, fellow teachers. My name is Paulo Machado, speaking today from Sao Paulo, Brazil. I'm a teacher, materials writer, editor, and consultant in the area of English language teaching and learning. It's a pleasure and an honor to be part of the 17th Breast Tissot International Conference. And today, I speak on behalf of Cambridge University Press. In today's talk, named Global Voices in the Classroom, we'll be addressing the BNCC and the English competences in this official document. We also present some features of a brand new textbook series by Cambridge University Press and how this series is aligned with the guidelines and competences proposed by the BNCC and how this fact can help boost our students' global voices. When I first started teaching in regular schools back in the 90s in Bahia, the planning of the syllables or school curricula was made much more based solely on personal experience and beliefs. Or in the case of less experience and less critical teachers and coordinators, many times according to a chosen textbook scope and sequence. There were no common guidelines about what students would learn across the nation. And that, in many cases, led to huge dissonances from region to region, school to school, program to program, teacher to teacher. Since then, there have been efforts by the Brazilian state to firstly grant educational access to all school age population, and secondly, to enhance the quality of the educational system. As part of this effort, the Leite Diretrizes e Bases da Educação Nacional as established to set the principles of education in Brazil. After many years, the official document in Brazil by the Ministry of Education that aims at ensuring the learning rights to all Brazilian students. These learning rights are supposed to be covered by the general competences of based education according to the PNE, Plano Nacional de Educação. The BNCC was then written by a team of specialists and object of debates and consultations with actors from all walks of the educational spectrum in Brazil. The last version of the BNCC for Ensino Fundamental was finally published in 2017, and school systems were supposed to have put it into practice in their curricula by 2020. By now, as we approach 2022, all private and public schools are expected to be using the BNCC as a general foundation for the design of syllabuses, and course plans complying with the national agenda while giving voice to their local characteristics and peculiarities. According to the LDB, competences and the general guidelines are common, but the curricula are diverse. Even so, the diverse content in the curricula must work in favor of the development of the competences. This does not pose as a small challenge. And great efforts have been put into practice by the educational systems all over Brazil to accomplish this goal. It can be said that the BNCC is a national response to the UNESCO proposition, an education for global citizenship, which suggests the adoption of competences in the constitution of educational policies worldwide, aiming 
at developing a so-called global citizenship. Thus, following the global trend, the PNCC defines competences as the applicability of knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values to deal with the complexity of issues in everyday life, of citizenship, and in the world of work. According to the document, these competences must assure the power of education to stimulate actions that contribute to transform society, making it socially fairer and more environmentally friendly. The language area in the BNCC is divided into Portuguese, art, physical education, and English. English is part of the BNCC only in the Ensino Fundamental for Anos Finais from sixth to ninth grade. The BNCC understands that learning English allows students to engage and take part in the ever globalized and plural world, where boundaries between personal, local, regional, national and international interests are more and more blurred and contradictory. For the BNCC, the pedagogical and political aspects of learning English are intertwined. As educators, we need to ask ourselves, what English do we teach at school? The English of central countries, Eurocentric, English as a foreign language. The BNCC focuses on the social and political functions of English. And as such, English is understood as lingua franca, not taken as a foreign language or as original from hegemonic countries whose speakers must serve as a model to be followed. The one spoken by people from the United States or from England, the correct English to be taught and learned. Rather, the BNCC understands English as a language used all around the world by speakers from multicultural and plurilingual backgrounds, which leads us to a notion that disconnects English from specific and typical cultures, legitimating the use of English in local contexts, which in turn favors interculturality and the critical reflection about the different ways of seeing and understanding the world, understanding other people, and understanding oneself. This legitimation of the use of English in local contexts allows and demands for the concept of multiliteracies and compassing the use of language in the digital realm, where English grants access and empowers voices within the various semiosis, audio, verbal, and visual. By making use of English in the digital world, students not only mine their access to multiple cultures and points of view, but are also empowered to express their own views of reality, turning the English language into an asset they use to decode discourses and express themselves as in the global community, having the local standpoint as a reference. In this sense, the focus of English in the classroom should rely on intelligibility, where all different accents, jargon, slang, and ways of expressions are respected and above all, valued. Needless to say, while people around the world experience unparalleled opportunities for cultural growth, they also experienced 
and parallel advances against their national and local identities, according to Kumara Badivello. However, it's important to point out that the relationship between local and the global simultaneously and actively interweave, interpenetrate and transform each other. And this bidirectional flow of discourses is what Kanagaraja calls glocalization. In fact, glocalization is also an opportunity for the revival of cultural identities in different parts of the world. Inside the process in which boundaries are smudged, you know, there is space for the individual in forming their own identities by noticing that not only is identity a matter of being part of a system, whether local, national, or global, but also a matter of choices within the systems. In making choices and thus forming identities in this complex world, individuals start by evaluating their own and others' cultural values, and then develop the necessary critical awareness that has the potential to enrich their lives. Having this in mind, Cambridge University Press has created a new textbook series for Brazil so students can develop the specific competences that underline what the BNCC advocates in terms of learning outcomes in the Ensino Fundamental Anos Finais. The BNCC advocates for the following specific competences. Beware of one's own identity in the plurilingual and multicultural world, reflecting about how English learning helps the insertion, how the English language helps the insertion in the globalized world communicating several media as a means to access and interpret knowledge from various perspectives. Build repertoires in English to foster and understand linguistic diversity. Use new technologies to build repertoires ethically and responsibly and have access to several diverse cultural heritages both material and immaterial. From now on, we will address examples from the Cambridge University Press Game Changer textbook series, while providing some insights about how these examples comply with the main prerogatives in the BNCC. With this in mind, we'll start with the concept of the PNCC's first specific competence for the learning of English in the Ensino Fundamental classroom. Beware of one's own identity in a multicultural and plurilingual world. We will address that by using some activities from Game Changer. We'll start with the opening page of unit five in the starter level. The name of the unit is A Day in the Life. As we can see, the page shows us an image of a smiling girl looking directly at the camera. This girl is fetching water for her family in the Rajasthan Desert in India. Much has been said about the use of images in the English classroom. And this rich image can be used in many different ways. First, as this is level starter, teachers could start by eliciting words that describe the image. Students can brainstorm words in small groups. And at this point, they maybe will be able to come up with the names of colors, 
clothing items, emotions, times of day, etc., etc. This would activate schemata and review language items they have already studied. But let's remember that we are discussing here is identity in a multicultural and plurilingual world. So let's just stick with it. One possible starting question for the teacher to make would be, where is this? And the possible answer would be in the desert or in India. If students don't mention India, Pakistan, or some other country from the Far East due to the lack of visual repertoire, the teacher can then provide the information and say that according to the Indian Ministry of Education, there are more than 112 major languages spoken in India. But English is the official language in that country as well as Hindi. As a follow-up, another question could be asked, are there other languages in your country aside from the official language, Portuguese? Depending on the region the class is taking place and the students' backgrounds, this could raise an interesting conversation, especially in schools that are near native Brazilian communities. Yes, or where native Brazilian backgrounds still resist in making themselves noticed and empowered. This, of course, can lead to various possibilities for students' research, project work, and debates, which will all strongly contribute to the awareness of students' identities. Further, when, further, when we observe the section think, we are exposed to two questions. What's important in the girl's daily routine? And what's important in your daily routine? First, teachers need to make sure that students understand what the image shows about the girl's routine. They should be intrigued by what the girl is carrying on top of her head, and maybe they need to be helped to reach the conclusion that she's carrying water in a vessel. In that region, it is common that women and girls carry water along many kilometers to supply their household or community needs. Of course, this fact may raise many questions in Brazilian communities. And all these questions lead to the raising awareness about identity. Where do you in your family obtain water from? Is it okay to walk many kilometers just to get water? Is it okay that only girls are supposed to fetch water? How do you think the girl in the photo feels about that? Are there jobs in your community that only girls and women do? Is it okay for girls and boys to work? Are there jobs that only men do in your community? What the writers are proposing here is that students compare their own lives with the life of the girl in the image. And by doing that, they become aware of aspects of their own culture and their own identity. Students at this level are 11 to 12 years of age. And in becoming adolescents, we believe it is meaningful for them to think, well, Fetching water is a big and central part of this girl's life. And what is a big and central part of my life, of my routine? Am I totally self-oriented and self-centered? Do I spend some time in my routine doing things for my family and my community? 
How does that impact my identity and the person I am? Of course, students may not be able to reflect about these topics in English, let alone talk about them. But even a critical thinking practice done in the mother tongue at this point is enriching and may lead to self-questioning in English later uh, when students will be able to rely on a more sophisticated linguistic repertoire. All in all, in this section, students are able to practice critical thinking while using the language they had at their disposal at that time to do so. Next, we'll focus our attention on how vocabulary activities can contribute to raising awareness about one's identity too. In this example, still the same unit of book starter, students are asked to complete the captions for a video that Ivory made about her day. So in a very controlled way, they fill in blanks with activities that make up the girl's day. And after studying time expressions for periods of the day and collocations with the verb take, the verb have, and the verb go, so take a bus, have dinner, go to school, they are then exposed to real English and are encouraged to use all this information to talk about themselves and their own daily routines. This is what we see in this section, use it. The section is about, the section use it is, you know, this is what the section use it. This is what the section use it is about throughout the books of Game Changer. Yet, some of you may say, this is not the same as reflecting about one's own identity, but we think that routine habits are probably one of the most expressive elements of one's identity, wouldn't you? Doesn't the way you go to work the sports you play or the time you get out from bed make up who you are and how you see yourself? And don't your favorite things such as your favorite time of day contribute to the form, to form your identity as well? This is especially true when we compare our perspectives with the perspectives of other people. Comparing different and diverse views of life leads to understand ourselves better and to development of social emotional skills such as accepting differences or practicing empathy also, it helps one set the scale of values from where to behave. We are not going to imitate anyone or judge their life better or worse than ours, but rather put our own life under perspective. Let's take the example of Wei Ji, a 14-year-old student from Singapore. She's the character in the reading section in Game Changer Starter. Wei Ji has a blog where she writes about her student's life and posts pictures that she takes around the city in the little time she has during the weekend. School in Singapore is very competitive. And students are supposed to face long hours of study in order to be able to live up to academic demands and the expectations of their families. In this sense, Game Changer requires that after doing the reading activities, our students reflect 
about the question asked in the think section. Is it good to study a lot like Weiji? Why? Why not? Although the answer may vary a lot from person to person, studying habits are also culturally situated. As we know, some school systems demand much more from students than others. And some families have a greater consideration for studying habits than other families though. So based on this, uh, what the writers aim in this activity is that our Brazilian students, whatever they are in Brazil, whether in a small town in the countryside of Pernambuco or a central area of Sao Paulo city, reflect about their studying habits and think on how much those habits are able to make up one's identity. We plan these activities so that students can see in the first place that differences matter and that the lives of ordinary people from far away matter. Being important enough to be part of a textbook in Brazil. Even more, they can serve as global examples of English being used to understand different cultures and to entice our students to realize that their own ordinary lives also matter and can also be examples to other students around the world. Now that we have showed how Game Changer can foster students' awareness of their identity and how this can be crucial in the plurilingual world as a global force and personal asset, let's turn our attention to a second specific competence. Access diverse cultural heritages, both material and immaterial as a way to broaden perspectives by getting in contact with various cultural and artistic manifestations. Ready? As an example to illustrate how Game Changer does that, let us focus our attention in the Around the World section of Unit 7, Bookstarter. This section aims at recycling the target language in the unit in an authentic context and give way to possibilities for cultural insights and critical thinking. The unit deals with the familiar topic of clothes. So the Around the World section brings an article in a teen magazine named Clothes for the Extreme. The name of the article is How to Dress in the Desert. Well, the article brings a boy named Ahmed Mustafa Budahab Rabia Suhalim, who happens to be a 13-year-old Bedouin artist from the Arabian Desert. In the text, Ahmed speaks about two pieces of his artwork that he had submitted to the magazine and explains to the reader about the clothes worn by the people in his drawings. He starts by writing about his brother as a description of a drawing he had made. As we can see, the section opens first a door for our students to understand a bit more about the Bedouin culture and traditions, and then opens a second door so they can appreciate the beautiful descriptive drawings made by Ahmed. In this way, through English, our students will be widening their cultural backgrounds and their artistic exposure. Besides, by reading the text, 
and observe in the images, one might ask the reasons why the men in white are sitting and congregating at the end of the day, while the lonely woman in dark is still working, fetching water for herself and the group. It is thus desirable when using Game Changer that teachers also exercise their critical reading in order to bring the classroom all the rich possibilities encouraged by Game Changer, which allows to students and teachers alike the use of English as an incredible tool to access knowledge, broaden perspectives, and understand values and interests of other cultures and to act responsibly and ethically in society. We'll finish this talk by strongly recommending that you carefully analyze Game Changer and observe all the exclusive features that will help you do great teaching aligned with the BNCC prerogatives while contributing so that your students develop culturally situated global voices that will make a difference in the world. All this by learning and using English in a fun, efficient way. Thank you so much. I hope to see you somewhere using Game Changer.